Last summer, during a brutal heat wave here in Australia, my family lost power for two full days. No lights, no aircon, no fridge, just heat, sweat, and frustration. And we weren't alone. Thousands of homes were affected. That blackout wasn't just bad luck. It was a warning sign. Australia's grid is under pressure. and We can't ignore it any longer. Now this country has done great things with renewables. Solar panels glint on rooftops. Wind farms stretch across the countryside. In fact, in 2024, nearly 40% of our energy came from renewable sources. That's something to celebrate. But here's the truth. Solar and wind power rely on the weather, not demand. And battery storage, while improving, can't yet carry the full load of our national grid. According to the Australian Energy Market Operator, in 2027, we're headed for serious shortfalls if we don't add more reliable generation. So what fills the gap? Right now, it's coals, fossil fuels, gas, the very things heating up our planet. That's why I think it's time to seriously, finally, reopen the conversation about nuclear energy in Australia. Now, nuclear energy isn't about replacing renewables. It's about completing the puzzle. Nuclear energy is safe, <coughs> clean, and constant. It doesn't wait for the sun. It doesn't rely on the wind. It works 24-7. That's why countries like France use it to power over 70% of their electrical grid with some of the lowest emissions in the developed world. The US, the UK and Canada are all developing their nuclear programs, yet Australia, with over a third of the world's uranium, refuses to even consider it. We export the fuel to power reactors overseas, yet we won't use it here at home. That's not just ironic, it's irrational. Now I get it. People hear nuclear energy and they think danger. Chernobyl, Fukushima. The fear is real. But the facts, they tell a different story. Modern reactors, especially small modular reactors, which are most commonly used, are not what they used to be. They're cheap, small, and they have passive safety systems built in to shut down automatically if anything ever goes wrong. And what about waste? Here's the thing most people don't know. All of the nuclear waste produced globally over the last 60 years could fit in just one football field about 10 meters deep. And it's sealed, monitored, and contained. Now, Australia, which conveniently has a lot of football fields, is uniquely suited to storage. We have remote lands, stable ground, and we're already doing it here in Sydney with Lucas Heights, which most people don't even know exists. Now, it's not just about things like science. It's about opportunity. Australia could become the leading clean energy innovator in the Asia Pacific. And what about global issues? If oil prices rise in the Middle East, they rise here as well. I think that's risky. We need local, stable, and clean energy generation. Nuclear can provide that. Energy independence isn't just about economics anymore. It's about strategy. Now, most people say, let's wait till the technology is cheaper. But we've already seen what waiting can do. Blackouts, fossil fuels, missed opportunities. Waiting has a cost. It's no longer the question of whether we have the technology, it's whether we have the courage. Nuclear energy isn't an either or situation. We still need solar, wind, hydrogen, and battery storage, but we also need nuclear. Let's lift the moratorium, not to build a reactor tomorrow, but to start doing the research, to start debating openly, and to give future governments options, not restrictions. What will future generations say that we did when we had the chance to lead? 
Let's lift a nuclear moratorium, not to replace renewables, but to complete the picture. For the economy, for the environment, and for future generations to come. Thank you.